Welcome to Metaphysical Mississippi. I'm your host, Emily, and of course, we have co-host Krista, and today we have Antoinette and Russell. And um, I believe you've seen both of them before, but today's topic is going to be a part two version of what Reiki is and a little bit more about community Reiki share and all that fun stuff. So we're so glad you're here with us today. How is everybody doing? Great. It's a Monday. Good. <laughs> it's a Monday. Glad to be here. Yes. Uh, Antoinette, you recorded Krista and Russell before where they were given mm-hmm. a little bit of a take right after a Reiki share, a community Reiki share that is held in uh, Flowood, Mississippi in the Jackson Metro area. And Russell, it is at your yoga um studio um primarily there and which is a beautiful space by the way I just yeah. love that space and I was like we have to continue this conversation and I have a lot of questions about Reiki because I am not uh I have not been into any training I've never been to a Reiki share and I still have never really officially had a Reiki session so I may throw out some off the wall questions. Up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we just start, uh, Krista, if you want to share a little bit about Russell and then have Russell just continue on with what he wants to say in yeah. response with so, that. So yes, Russell and I discussed Reiki in a short little video early on, um, la- well, la- sometime last year. Uh, but this is our first official uh, interview to have Russell with us. So um, I met Russell, oh, two, three years ago in a, in a yoga class. And he uh, took a, a Reiki class in a class that when I was training to be a Reiki teacher. And we have been big buddies ever since and I think we we both feel like we both feel like the other one is our our mentor and our support system uh but especially a a friend so so I'm excited to have him on here uh Russell if you want to give us a little history of of yourself with with Reiki and yoga and then we'll get into all Emily's questions Mm -hmm. sure um uh, Russell Holly I have Russell's yoga where we hold the um, community Reiki share every month, third Wednesday of every month, and I am a hairdresser, I am a yoga teacher, and I'm a Reiki master, um, and I'm working on becoming a Reiki teacher as well. So um, with that said, that's about all there is to me. <laughs> well, there's a lot more to it, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so great. So Emily, we are ready for your questions. <laughs> okay. So I know when I first heard about Reiki, I was thinking, okay, it's just kind of like going to a massage therapist, but it's a place where people really don't touch you and they just put your hands over you and somehow some kind of healing takes place. Okay, so that's what my first a uh, big toe sticking into understanding what that was, you know, the waters of Reiki. But then as Krista became Reiki certified er, and I started noticing trends and things that are going on in the metaphysical community, mm-hmm. I'm also seeing people holding classes like train for this and train for that. And that made me start thinking, well, does that mean everybody who takes a Reiki course is is going to want to be a practitioner or is Reiki training a technique that you as an individual uses to um, in your daily practices? And would that be something that uh, a seeker would want to do just to commit, just to put Reiki in their daily lives and use it in their Mm -hmm. day-to-day jobs not be a practitioner but you know in their day like 
dealing with the situation with their family? How can I tap into that Reiki energy to, you know, put out the good energy? And, and, and I first want to yeah, go on. first want to say that um, before we answer that huge question, <laughs> um, it's not just, yeah, it's not just in the metaphysical community. Like I know I've noticed over the past couple of years, it's in mainstream media. I've, I've seen it talked mm-hmm. about on TV. Um, Dr. Oz, it was on the Dr. Oz show, keeping up with the Kardashians, you know. Oh, I missed that episode. Uh, you know, it's on uh, morning TV sh- news shows, and of course, Facebook, Instagram. So, so I mean, it's it's it it is looked at a alternative healing technique, not not just in the woo woo community, but but as mm-hmm. part of a mindfulness and relaxation technique, a way to relieve stress, and also a way to deal with with chronic illnesses and and other health issues so i just want to throw that in there that that it it this is these are important questions you're asking emily because it it is becoming uh that that term is out in the zeitgeist more now and so but i'll let russell and antoinette answer your question <laughs> well, so where do you... I, go ahead russell um you know, one of your one of your questions in that really long question. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, we are practitioners and we work on other people, but we can also do Reiki to ourselves. And um, a lot of people that become attuned, attunement is the process of where the symbols are basically downloaded into your aura so that you can practice Reiki. But a lot of people become Reiki certified so that they can work on themselves daily. And, um, you know, yes, it's important to go to a practitioner, but it's also important um, to self-love and self-heal. Yeah. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? Yes, Mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, It's also good for symptom management. So if you have health concerns um, that, bother you in the physical body um it's really good to have reiki to help you work through those like i have pain in my feet from standing all day so if it's one of those days i can tap in give myself reiki and it really just gets me through the day without as much pain as it used to but um another part of that really long multiple question thing is um well i noticed that i was very empathic before i got reiki i was absorbing other people's energy not knowing it i was holding on to things that weren't mine um i might even feel emotions that weren't mine i would be angry and not know why i would be upset i would be sad i would not know why i was having these type of things but what happened when i got attuned was not only was i tapping into the energy of reiki but now i had what I like to call uh, energy um, understanding. Um, So I could interpret that energy more easily, where it's coming from, what's mine, what's not mine, how to get rid of it, and how to manage my own energy system. And that in itself is a powerful tool to have. Mm -hmm. So it makes you more aware of, well, identifying yourself. Yeah. So it really helps you tune into you. Wow. And then being able to identify, oh, that makes me want to get a class. <laughs> yeah. What? And even and where, like the. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you know, but. I said, I think we know where you can go to get certified. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, 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 yeah. Nice. Um, so, I mean, that, and I, I think I've shared this before, that, that's where my Reiki journey started was for self-healing. I um, had a Reiki practitioner who I was very close to, and she moved out of state, and I decided to to get the training for myself. So, I really had no intention of being a practitioner, much less a teacher. Uh, but, it, it, you know, Reiki is a protocol It is a protocol that's used, it it can be used in a clinical setting um, for stress management and and pain relief, uh, pain pain management. But 
for a lot of us, it is also a part of our spiritual practice in our self-care hygiene. It, it is a way to, to keep us um, clear. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, I might be a Reiki master teacher, but I'm not perfect always in my personal practice. Cause I may go a couple of weeks where I'm not really doing my little things that I do with Reiki. And, and, and I can tell <laughs> when I go have me a little Reiki session, things, things, um, get, get better. So, uh, so I guess yeah. for a lot of us, it's, it's, for me personally, it's my personal practice with Reiki. That that's the most important part of, yes. of Reiki to me is for my personal practice. Um, How long does a does a a session last? Like you know, you can take a, uh, a medicine for a headache, and you know, you know it's out of your system within such and such hours. Oh, so you're asking how long will the benefits? Yeah. Of, yeah. of a Reiki session. Yes, exactly. The next one. <laughs> you know, I, I know what I'm going to say. Do one of y'all want to take that? Um, it really depends on what the ailment is and uh, what is causing the ailment as well. So I, I have knee problems about once every three to six months and a little Reiki session will zip, zip that right on up and then I'll be good for the next three to six months. Um, but other things like balancing my chakras, if I have issues going on in my life that's causing that imbalance, if I'm not addressing the issues, um, which is the source of the imbalance, and Reiki will help. But then um, I also have to do my own due diligence with balancing out my, myself and my life energetically. Now, do you have to know your chakras to get into Reiki? Because I, mm -hmm. I don't know my chakras. Normally, it's part of a class a little bit, you know. But do they introduce you to sort of what a chakra is in when you take a Reiki well, class? Most, yeah. most Reiki teachers do okay. talk about it. You, you don't. So so Reiki energy and y'all hop in if y'all have a, a different perspective or a better way to say it. it it's going to do what it's going to do. And mm -hmm. I would say a <laughs> practitioner or client doesn't necessarily have to like focus on we're doing the chakras. But I think that's how the energy works. It's energy centers in our body. Therefore, Reiki is energy and it's going to, that's how it's go, going to, to, to work. But our intention, if you have the intention of working with the chakras, I feel like that that kind of helps us human third dimensional brains understand it better. Do y'all have any thoughts about that, Russell? No, I, I once heard of a practitioner who would just stand at the front of the table and just hands out, you know, like, but her intention was everything and how the energy moved through the body. So different practitioners definitely practice it different. It's not mandatory, but it is part of the hand positions that we learn in class um, and scanning the body. All right, because I'm about to go in a different, I'm about to ask a question. So have y'all finished answering that big, long question that I've I think so. <laughs> okay, because here's the next question. When, let's just say you are acting as a practitioner and you have a, a person come in, um, do, it, do you have a verbal exchange of asking, you know, why kind of like you know when you go see a doctor why are you here today what is your ailments what areas does there have to be a verbal exchange of this is the issues this is this is the problems i'd like to be uh, to be addressed or are you intuitive or psychic and you already know in the yes. first place <laughs> Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> you don't have to. I personally talk to my clients beforehand. I also set, ask my clients to set an intention for what they're going to receive when they are on my table so that they are mindful of what we are doing. Um, but is it necessary? No, because when we tap into the life force energy, it has a mind of its own. It is going to read their body and do what source is wanting for that client. So 
it's going to read their, their energetic self and know the energy is going to know where to go, what to do. So just for example, we may touch their leg or hold our hands over their leg. Well, they may feel it in their shoulder. I mean, it's there, there's, mm-hmm. the energy flows and it goes to where it's needed. And the body itself is intelligent. So the body can divert that too. It's interesting where a client will say, I'm in a position and and then they say just like that. Oh, I felt that in a random other place. And so it's cool how we perceive it, doing it, the practitioner and they experience it could be differently as the client. Mm -hmm. So the, the client, well, I've asked this before. The client has to be a participant in the receiving or the allowing the energy from source to come in because from other conversations, the source is this this energy is not from you. It is is it y'all like the word channeled? Or is that not the right word? Well, it, it, people do use that word and and mm-hmm. I don't like to say have to. like does the client have to I think their higher self is is uh comes and play there in a okay so in a session in a typical like Reiki session where I have a client come in yes they are participant they are the most important participant their most important thing is to be there and be receptive Mm -hmm. but um and y'all hop in if y'all want to say something but but Sometimes you have a situation where there's someone, a family member who is in a coma or in hospice. You're not going to have. So, so we just, we send Reiki to that situation and the higher self either accepts it or doesn't accept it. So I've heard sometimes, I have heard it say sometimes that the person has to be willing and believe it for it to work. If they want to experience it, that might be true, but our higher selves sometimes does things that are in our best interest, maybe that that our human self, um, I don't know. I'm not saying that's truth. That's my, that's how I feel about it. Do y'all have a different interpretation of that? I believe that the energy always works in some yes. form or form. Um, I don't believe that they have to be willing because there's a lot of skeptics that get on the table. Mm-hmm. Tons skeptics of skeptics. Is okay. And, <laughs> and, but they leave feeling better. They leave feeling good. They leave feeling lighter. They leave feeling less stressed. Um, so. But if they want to get the most out of the experience, then they need to be open no they don't need to i hate that i don't like to ever make absolutes typically the will, maximum benefit i think is what you're looking for yes, yes the yes, maximum yes. benefit yeah 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 but i mean and sometimes spontaneous healings happen and sometimes they don't but you know because we're we're not in control of how that healing's gonna go um Okay, so let's just say somebody comes to you. Okay, can the source help? Like, if you know that there are things that they need to do to participate in healing, let's just say they, they're dehydrated. So all the Reiki okay. sessions in the world is not going to quench thirst or, you know, that they need mm. to actively participate in drinking more water. So do you think that the energy though will maybe help to block that stubbornness that, that client might have to not drinking water? <laughs> you know, it's gonna re- it may help remove that block that the client has to not drink it. To start um, taking the steps that he needs or she needs to do to heal that uh okay i I mean it 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 could it has the ability to do that but but still we are we are beings with free will and you know i feel i feel like reiki has the 
capability to do you know whatever but sometimes it's not in our highest um go ahead <laughs> i'm not trying to be a skeptic i'm just well i am trying to be a skeptic just that you know what what is you know you got to cut on your hand and you could just go get stitches and get it or do you do reiki power on it and does it heal it's not reiki is Are not the that? only but well, i mean right. but but yeah right. yeah no i believe <laughs> i'm just <laughs> i like how krista said um it has the ability to it. And also it will probably put it in their awareness that they need to drink more water. And it might clear up some blocks that's causing that uh, for them to have that in their system. And ultimately, hopefully they would take that and make the decision, but the decision ultimately would still be theirs with the free will. I, I guess mm -hmm. uh, with Reiki though, you know, I just see that's power. You know, I was brought up in such weird cults type religious things to you know one time we didn't even go to the doctor because you needed to pray about it anoint it with oil mm -hmm. you know so i just i'm just trying to dissect not dissect but that reiki is not the end all be all of every element but it is it helps and uh, I just wanted to make sure that, you know. It always helps. Um, it never harms. Right. Um, but, but, it's it not, always... but it's not a substitute for mm -mm. if you need to go to the emergency room, go to the emergency room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not doctors we are practitioners and yes yeah if you need to go to the doctor go to the doctor but follow it up with a reiki session yes 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 because yes. okay so reiki it can heal and does many times heal physical ailments <laughs> or issues but reiki works on an energetic level mm -hmm. like it, it's it's in a different um You know, when you're talking about mind, body, spirit, it it it's kind of in the more spirit or or mind category, spirit or mind category than, you know, because okay, so I'm a Reiki practitioner, but sometimes I go to the chiropractor, sometimes I go get a massage, sometimes I go to the doctor. You know, I use discernment on the issues I have what thing do I need to do sometimes when there's a physical issue we need to do a physical thing mm -hmm. that's why sometimes even though touch is not necessary in Reiki sometimes I touch because that's that physical it's a physical action for a physical manifestation of a physical issue so so sometimes it we they need to do a physical thing to fix a physical problem. But many physical things do start in the mind, in the emotion, the mental body and the emotional body. And that's where Reiki really shines. That's where it really, um, I think it helps. It helps us have discernment and clarity and receptivity to doing those physical things that maybe we need to do. Like you said, Emily, like maybe the issue is they're extremely dehydrated. I'm one of those people that fall into that category sometimes. You're laying on the Reiki be bed table and you're talking with your practitioner or you're in deep meditation and you get the download or you get the hit. I need to drink more water. <laughs> that's, that's, the magic of Reiki but but sometimes Reiki does go in there and fix up that is like okay I mean I've, I've heard of people people will have some kind of little trip knee or something and sprain their ankle years ago been hurting them for years have a Reiki session and it never bothers them again now that doesn't always happen because sometimes we have other things that it that pain in our life may be serving other purposes or we have other things we need to work on before we move mm -hmm. past that, but it but it can do that. Um, Russell, I feel like you want to say something. Um, 
no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we need to focus on getting people in classes that so they can learn these techniques so they can use it in their day to day life, because um, I believe it's a great investment that they can do for themselves. And we would I'm sure it would be great to have a lot of practitioners, but people don't have time. And it would be more bang for their buck if they yes. could to a weekend and learn these techniques. Krista said that to me one time in a session. She said, it's cheaper just to become a practitioner. You can do it for yourself. <laughs> but am I, I putting like, all practitioners out of business? No. Sir? <laughs> no. no. Is, it, is Reiki a movement of, of self-healing, self-love, self-tapping into energy? Um, I believe so. And before now, Reiki was so sacred and like kept so secret. You know, it wasn't spread like it is. I mean, we're blessed in the age that we are now that it's affordable to go get Reiki uh, classes and be attuned for yourself and take your power back and, and disseminate it and spread it and have community like we do. Uh, you know, in the, in the old days, I imagine it was just like one person at a village. And it was like, you need that good energy stuff. Go see this person. But now I mean, we have so many of us and that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. I, I have not. I, go on, Russell. I agree with that. Um, we are living in the perfect time um, for Reiki and the sharing Reiki um, and for people to get attuned. And even if it's just level one or two. For themselves um you don't have to take it all the way you don't have to become a master uh but reiki anyone would benefit from becoming attuned yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now do you feel like uh i don't know anything about uh the history other than just people sharing here and there like this person brought it to this area and that came from here and blah 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 but um do you do you think it was termed something else well it was probably termed something else and then someone decided there was some kind of symbols that is used to it, do you have to know the symbols and all that to this attunement and all that is that's kind of confuses me or is this top secret stuff that you have to learn <laughs> well i will tell you up until recently it was top secret and we didn't discuss it and i i still you know i kind of go back and forth on how i feel about that too i don't want it to lose its sacredness and so sometimes when things are kept secret it tends to be more sacred but yet i think we can find a way to keep it sacred without keeping it secret and the the truth is we know there's there's people out there that's never heard the word reiki before in their life and they have that natural ability they have that gift to touch someone or to send loving energy so um my feelings about reiki is sometimes when we say use of the term Reiki, there's two different things we might be talking about. One thing is that that energy, th that that certain energy signature that we channel in through with a Reiki session, it's everywhere. And, and I think it it is available to everyone uh, if they are a match to it or they are open to it. Mm -hmm. But when we go get Reiki training, that is a protocol. So, so Reiki is talking about this certain energy signature. It also sometimes means this certain protocol that you go learn to where you learn, you get attuned and you work with symbols that work with the Reiki energy so that you know how to do a session for someone. Gotcha. So, so I do feel any anyone can learn it even a child can learn it um e e even someone who um may be on the the spectrum mentally can learn it uh 
learning it and being able to do it is one thing being a practitioner to me that's where certification is necessary that's where yeah. training and that's where because if you're putting yourself out there as a practitioner especially if you're receiving money or doing some type of energy exchange that's a whole different responsibility you are mm -hmm. you are providing a service to the community and with that does come certain procedures and protocols that that just just common sense need to be followed but but so so the term reiki that uh, there are other energy modalities that may or may not be necessarily using reiki energy but it does a, a similar thing um i forgot what your question was. well well i'm going to go to a different okay. one and well, I want to see if Antoinette or Russell wants to add or take away from that. I and you can disagree you know. with me, that's okay. Okay. So, all right. So, I mean, as being a certified practitioner um, and you're dealing with other people, I mean, is in in your training, you'll learn you learn how to tap in or tap off, turn on, turn off. And I'm sure you have a hygiene practice that you do to um, do that. You don't have to reveal that. But um, when you're pulling in that energy, has negative energy ever snuck in? Or is Reiki energy a pure energy and you set your intention to tap into it? You know, like, you know, like not possession, but you know how when you're playing with the spirits and can can you ever pull in a negative energy? I would say energy? pull in. So I would say when that happened, it was probably me or the client not quite short up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Like, um, maybe I had a hectic morning that morning and I just ran into the Reiki room, did my quick little thing and just got into it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that. Antoinette or Russell, do y'all want to? Because that's a good question, Emily. I personally believe that when when we are working on someone and we are we are not the ones doing the work mm -hmm. source you. sends the energy through our body into the recipient mm -hmm. um that energy is always pure that energy is always for their highest good the end but gotcha. and i have um i think protection is important um i do other modalities and so protection is part of every one of my modalities that I do and I will say that I feel guided and protected when I'm in session and in service so I know that it's not only me being in service but I know that I'm divinely protected and guided from help on the other side and so that gives me the it makes me feel better being in service I also think it's important to know what to do if something happens that you're uncomfortable with and that's part of our training how to cut our cords how to protect ourselves how to end the session so Oh, um, cutting cords. I've heard that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I do. I like the visualization of that. Um, that you plug yourself in and then the cord goes to the, the recipient and then you unplug it when it's done. Mm -hmm. so I do. And, like and if so, in, in Reiki, the way we work with Reiki, it's not our energy doing something with their energy it's it's the practitioner is a conduit and the and the and the client is the receiver yes basically oh, and, i want to um, add to that yeah please do no, the only time I've ever heard of something like that happening in session was 
with a person who had attachments or spiritual attachments to them. And so there are situations where we refer them to people with the higher spiritual um, services than what Reiki provides in a typical session. A little more training. Yeah. <laughs> but there are people who are more geared to work in that in that realm. And so no, no, most of us have a person, we know somebody we can call to get them the help they need, but it's not going to be in the typical basic training. Gotcha. Right. But, so, um, but Reiki deals with the light and the good and the everything, like, like where you, they, they deal with where the good angels are, wherever, <laughs> the good prayer, the laying of the hands, that's kind of. The spirit yeah, it definitely part. feels very light. It feels very warm and fuzzy hug type energy. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, and I, I don't even like to label it good or bad or evil or dark or light. It, it's just vibrational matches. It, it, it's like people will be attracted to the practitioner that they that's a. a a vibrational match um I, I guess that's not to say that but some heavy stuff doesn't happen on the table sometimes it it right. it, it does yeah <laughs> I, I think i've asked y'all and y'all i can't remember if y'all have at, answered this question in previous um, interviews but uh do you feel like greg he's a, a gateway modality into other things it was for me <laughs> yeah or or was yoga first or you know for each of you yeah. individually or I'm doing yoga now I feel like Reiki was my gateway for sure but then yoga is is also super yummy like um Reiki's you know energy on the outside of the body but yoga is moving the energy within the body and the poses and so I definitely see the benefit in both of them and to me, they both work hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's Reiki just. He was first. Reiki was for you first? Yes. Reiki for me was first. And um, as Krista said earlier, um, there are people that have just a natural gift of touch. And I was blessed that I was one of those people. And so even before I became attuned Reiki one, two, then master level, I was doing energy work for the past for 20 years before that and you didn't so, label it as such though no um but with the difference with what i did then and what i do now in the past i was using my own energy i was wearing myself out and hurting myself where reiki um i'm using life force energy that flows through me into the recipient. So I'm not causing myself harm. And I'm also, actually, when we practice Reiki, we are benefiting ourselves as well. So not only does the recipient receive love and light, we do too. Gotcha, gotcha. And I want to circle back in exactly what the question was, but when I was talking about how I've only had a handful or just a few Reiki sessions that kind of was like, Oh, I don't know what that was. Um, if I really analyzed it, I was probably trying to do, use a little bit of my own energy. You know, I was probably trying to, wasn't just in source, just, just the funnel, but I was trying to do more than was really required that I do as a conduit. Um, but I think if, if, because that, that's that been a part of my journey. I, I started to say struggle, but I'm not going to say struggle. But it that has been a good lesson for me to turn over. It's not, I'm not giving up my power to Reiki. I'm allowing Reiki to come work through me. Mm -hmm. And it's easy for us caregivers, people who are caregivers or who are nurturers to want to be a part of that process and and put our own energy in it and that has been difficult for me i still uh 
Antoinette was somebody that was instrumental in trying to remind me. I don't know that you ever said, Krista, quit using your own energy, but you kept reminding me about cutting the cords and, and not feeling some sense of responsibility for each Reiki session that I did. It really wasn't my responsibility. The only responsibility a practitioner has in a Reiki session is to have prepared themselves by, by clearing to be that open channel and to just be of love, just to be of love and service. That's really all we have to do. Even if we forget the symbols, even if we don't start at, the, you know, do the protocol in the exact order that we learn, the, the most important part is to just get in touch with that Reiki energy and to put our human self in the back seat for a little while. We're not giving over control. We're just, we're just letting, it's like, we're still driving the car, but we're letting that computer navigation system. Like when we're mm -hmm. like, if we're going somewhere and we have our GPS, we're still driving the car, but we let that GPS kind of guide us. Mm -hmm. To me, that's very similar to as a Reiki practitioner when we, okay, we're going to let, um, the the Reiki energy do this I don't have to do it and I, I still sometimes feel like I have to do everything no I don't all I have to do is show up and be a conduit for the energy and that's all any of us have to do so so as a and if any of y'all want to jump in as someone who is just wanting to do Reiki on themselves um they're taught how to clear and connect and when y'all say source is it purely y'all just use y'all don't term source as something like god or higher power or do y'all just kind of just what is source I, I keep it at universal life force energy just broad spectrum of the the universe that's abundant it's just you know it's constant once i'm connected it doesn't run out i don't have to worry about getting tired it's, it's not that it's just universal life force energy it's the energy that is in our bodies and all around us do y'all ever compliment uh heightening that with uh stones or crystals or uh uh, taking salt baths before or after you know it, oh, we like you know. our toys and tools yeah yes <laughs> i'll let y'all hop in what y'all want to share any of your secrets <laughs> yeah I, I have many i have a whole toolkit that i like to use for my reiki sessions um uh, like a obsidian blade and i have um some chakra stones those are good to add to a session um, I, sometimes I might create a crystal grid under the table, that type of thing. Ooh. A selenite wine, that's one of my favorites, the selenite wine. Is music... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I was just going to ask Russell. I use a lot of crystals, um, um, mainly my chakra crystals. Um, also use um, little bells and... Um, Anything that vibrates, pretty much. Yeah. Anything that makes has a little frequency to it. Yeah. Um, That's and cool. yet, music, Reiki music. I have soft music playing in the background. A, a lot of it with frequency behind it. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. And and sometimes we might use a uh, scent or aromatherapy, depending on the the client or the, the location or the environment that we're doing the session in, um, that that's a whole modality in and of itself. But but you also have to be, it, it's important to check in with your client and make sure there's no sensitivities or allergies. But, but a lot of us use essential oils and incense and sage and all that if it's, con if it's agreeable mm -hmm. with the client. And, and you doing it on yourself, I guess, um, well, when you have a client and you're a practitioner, most of your clients, when they're coming for a Reiki session, will be on like a massage table, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing your day-to-day -day on self or 
um somebody says like russell you've performed it on me once when i came for a hair <laughs> do a haircut and i was dizzy and then you know you did a little something around my ears and i wasn't dizzy for two days so something did happen and um so your day-to-day -day, it's not really or when you do it on yourself do you have to be laid out you know <laughs> no you oh, yeah i mean do it just right here mm -hmm. and all we do is think of the symbols or just say think of the term reiki and the energy flows and oh, gotcha. and our body anywhere we have pain or discomfort we go to that location mm -hmm. i definitely have to be aware of where i'm at too because i can get so relaxed that i want to go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> that would and, probably be my problem too <laughs> and to me there's there's a a i don't know if spectrum's the right word um different ways i do it in different times like if i'm doing it as a this is a time for myself and I'm doing a like a session on myself or a form of relaxation or pain management. You know, I'll get in my recliner and do, do a little session. Actually, we learn the different hand positions, but most of the time I just do this and this and fall asleep for <laughs> every day. But you know, like, I don't always do the whole protocol that we're taught in our Reiki training, but I will like be driving down the road with, one hand on the steering wheel and the other hand on the knee. And and I'm driving, doing Reiki. I've read, I haven't really done this, but I've read books of other, because I do think it's important to be, okay, here's the thing. I think it's important to have some type of ritual or, or dedicated time or practice to your Reiki practice where you're giving it attention, intention and attention. But also, once you're used to working the energy, you can do a little quick, like, snap of a finger. Like, like if my if I got a headache, I can just kind of do this for a minute and then go on about my business. I've even read a book from a Reiki teacher who said she does Reiki on herself while she's watching TV. I was like, I would have never do that. But like, but, but why not? Why, right. why not? You know, I have done right, been doing Reiki on myself fall asleep like in the bed to go to sleep at night and wake up 30 minutes later and I'm the rake is still, <laughs> and I'm still oh you know so so we learn the techniques but you can make it your own you can personalize it you can I'll be driving down the road sending Reiki symbols to, to, to things uh if I have a situation in my life that I need clarity on you know, I send it Reiki. I tend to do that when I'm driving a lot. That may not be a good PSA for, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but you do, you find ways to fit it into your life and, and like what works for you. What, what do you need that reminder to tap in? Um, this is something I've thought before is like, well, can I be in Reiki all the time? But then I get busy, you know. <laughs> so, so I don't know. <laughs> That's probably how their old podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you uh, one thing. If I'm at a metaphysical Mississippi meetup, I'm probably doing Reiki on myself. <laughs> Just because I'm still, I'm in a group. I'm not going to be moving for an hour. And so I'm like, you know, covertly doing Reiki on myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's interesting. I think this is not a habit I have. I want to get into the habit of, uh, I, I do it occasionally, but I know some practitioners, that's part of their daily shower or bath. They're in the shower, they're doing their symbols. They're in the bath, they're doing a self Reiki session while they're in the bathtub. Um, usually when I'm in the bathtub, I'm just like, like, zoned, like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just like out of it. But, um, but, but water, water, so water can be a tool or a toy with, right? Like water isn't that like an amplifier? It, 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 uh, I actually use water in my sessions sometimes. So, um, Ooh, aqua, yeah. aqua Reiki. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, 
Ooh, that's an idea. Never mind. We'll talk later. Or you, we go float in the the Jack Zen uh, thing and do Reiki there. <laughs> um, right. So, what if y'all share um, when the next community Reiki share is at because a that's, yoga? Because that's a great if if you're never experienced Reiki or if you're already a Reiki master teacher, <laughs> that's a great place to come learn more about Reiki or. Uh, get a little Reiki love. Uh, Russell and I, and a lot of times Antoinette's there too, most of the time. Mm -hmm. So the third Wednesday of every month, you could come to Russell's yoga studio for a Reiki share. And then the fourth Wednesday of every month, I'll let Antoinette talk about that. Yeah. So the Mississippi Reiki Association has uh, also a Reiki share in person at Soul Synergy. And it's at 650. Um, and then the first Wednesday of every month, we have a virtual Reiki share on Zoom, and that can be found on our Facebook page for the Mississippi Reiki Association, both of those. So I, I recommend all three of them. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Wednesdays are Reiki days. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and both uh, Russell's Yoga and Soul Synergy are both located in Flowood, Mississippi. And Zoom is for anybody, anywhere. Right. Yes. Yes. And I think we all, as members of Mississippi Reiki Association, would love to hear about or help facilitate more Reiki shares all over the state. So then there may be some. So if there's any of our listeners who uh, host a Reiki share or know of a Reiki share in their area that they want to let other Mississippians know about or are interested in starting a Reiki share, uh, if you contact us here at Metaphysical Mississippi, we will direct you to the Mississippi Reiki Association or we'll put the Mississippi Reiki Association uh, website in the show notes where people can contact the Reiki Association and they can help facilitate events in your area, hopefully. <laughs> and they're also on our directory. We have a business directory on our website, metaphysicalms.com. And there's a business and uh, services directory where you can find the MSRA and um, more uh, other practitioners in Mississippi. Thank y'all okay. so much for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great afternoon. You as well, baby. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent.